What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we are gonna be comparing Python versus R. We're gonna see which one is better. Now, before I start this presentation, and yes, I made an entire presentation for this video, I have to address the elephant in the room. About a month ago, I made a somewhat controversial post. I don't think it's controversial. Some people did, apparently. Um, and it's right here, hopefully on your screen at this time. All it says is Python is better than R. That's my opinion. Uh, but it stirred up a lot of emotions for a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people messaged me, commented on it, and um, apparently a lot of people took offense to what I said. And they wanted me to explain why I felt this way. And I did not respond. For the pure fact that it was more fun to watch them argue and complain rather than answer their question. Uh, but also I knew I was gonna be making this video anyways. And so I just figured they could watch this video whenever I put it out, which uh, is right now. And so if you are only on LinkedIn and you've never watched my channel before and you were just seeing through this for the first time uh, and you remember that time when I posted it, I hope this will be clarifying for you. Um, and so without further ado, let's get into the presentation uh, and we will start from there. All right, so some of the things that we're gonna be discussing today in our Python versus R presentation is we're gonna be talking about descriptions, different libraries, the code slash syntax, pros and cons of both, and my final answer. Uh, I will say before we get into it, I'm not trying to go super in depth. Uh, I, I tried to make it as user-friendly as possible. Uh, if you know you guys are really wanting a more in-depth presentation on just one of these, I can absolutely do that. I plan on doing that at some point, um, but this is gonna be kind of high level and more talking about my thoughts and my feelings regarding this because it is a very emotional thing, I believe. Uh, without further ado, let's get into the description of both. Again, keeping it more high level and kind of getting to some specifics and then our conclusion. So let's look at the description of both Python and R. Starting with R, R is a programming language developed for statistical analysis. And the people who mostly used it for a long, long time were statisticians. And just recently within the past, you know, five, 10 years has really been used for data science and data analysis and visualizations and all of those things. Uh, it was developed in 1993. Uh, again, like I just said, primarily for statisticians, data miners and analysts. Um, and it's used by a ton of very large companies. Some of them are Uber, Facebook and Google, where there are tons of companies and even small companies that use R. And so if your company does any type of statistics or statistical analysis, there's a good chance that your company has either used R in the past or is currently using R as a programming language. Now onto Python. Python is a general purpose programming language. It's used for almost anything you can imagine. Uh, it may not be the best thing for every single thing it can do, but it can do almost anything. And so it's very general, very broad. It is quickly becoming the most popular programming language in the world, and it is used by companies like Google, Facebook, and Netflix. Now, if you noticed, in the companies that use Python and R, both Facebook and Google are on that list, and that wasn't by accident. I did that on purpose because I wanted to show that these companies, large companies, are going to use both programming languages for what they're good for, uh, which obviously we will talk about later, but I wanted to just kind of put that there for, um, I guess, foreshadowing. Now, before we look at libraries and packages, I just want to say that if I did not highlight your favorite library or package on here, I am sorry. There are so many, especially with R, there's just hundreds and thousands of different packages and libraries. Uh, I just can't possibly put them all on here. And so these are just a highlight of some of the more popular ones, the ones that I have personally used. Uh, and so I hope that you are not offended by that. But let's start with R. For data collection, you can use things like R crawler, read XL, uh, read RL, and R curl. For data wrangling and exploration, there's dplyr, SQL df, data.table, read R, and tidy R. And for data visualization, there's ggplot2, ggviz, plotly, esquis, and shiny. And over to Python for data collection, there's pandas, requests, and beautiful soup. For data wrangling and exploration, there's pandas, numpy, and scipy. And for data visualization, there is matplotlib, seaborn, and plotly. Again, this is just a high level overview of some of the packages in each of these programming languages. If you have never used R or Python, I think these packages are a really good place to start. Now for the code and the syntax on both of these, I tried to stay neutral on this. I tried to just 
to kind of say what everyone else was saying because I have my own very strong thoughts and opinions on this. Uh, but, you know, I wanted to stay somewhat unbiased, at least for this one. Um, but for R, it's easy slash medium uh, difficulty to pick up and start working from uh, from scratch. You know, if you've never picked up R, it can be kind of difficult to pick up. Um, a little bit more advanced, it can be difficult to maintain your code, especially as you start to scale uh, your code. And so that is a big problem that a lot of people have addressed or talked about with R. Uh, with Python, again, it's easy slash medium difficulty to pick up and learn. Uh, I, I think it can be about the same difficulty as R, in my opinion. Um, and that's what a lot of people said. And so that's not just my opinion. Uh, but it's easier to write and maintain larger scale code. Um, and so as you start building larger projects or join larger teams or take on more data, it's just easier to scale up. Now into some syntax examples. I 100% cherry pick these, uh, but I do feel like they're pretty representative of what the code looks like as a whole. Uh, and so a lot of people are probably gonna get mad at me saying, no, R is much easier than this. And you may be right in some aspects, but for the most part, I feel like this is fairly accurate. We're just reading in a CSV file and then trying to find the mean on a column or a field. And um, that's about it. And as you can tell, R is just a little bit more difficult, or a little bit more complicated. Python's a little bit more cleaner. It's a little bit more easy to read and pick up. Um, and that's something that a lot of people say about Python. It's very easily readable. Now let's look at some of the pros and cons of both, but we're gonna be starting with R. Some of the pros are that it is open source. It is fantastic for statistical analysis, has hundreds of packages and libraries purely for analytics. Uh, and that's what R is. It's purely for statistics and analyzing data. And lastly, it is easy to build visualizations with R. Now for the cons, it can't be embedded in web applications. And from what I've read, that's purely for security reasons. And so that is a big downside of using R. You need to know a large amount of packages and libraries. You can't just know like one or two, uh, kind of like in Python, you can know pandas and you can do a lot of different things with it. Uh, R doesn't really have that. You have to know um, several things in order to get kind of one task done. And lastly, R can run slow because of how they store their data. So those are some of the pros and the cons of R. Now let's move on to Python. Some of the pros for Python are it's open source. It's easy to read and learn, especially if you're just picking it up for the first time. Uh, it can be embedded into web applications, which can be very important for a lot of people. Um, and there's a growing number of libraries for data analysis. There are, of course, growing number of, of libraries and packages for R as well, but those are quite more well-established while Python is still growing and they're coming out and they're catching up to R fairly quickly. For the cons, the processing speed can be slow, especially depending on what library or package you're using. Um, but, you know, I think that's a con in both R and Python. On some level, they're going to run slow. Uh, it uses a large amount of memory, kind of part of the why it's running slow. Uh, it's simple to learn um, and simple to use. And sometimes that's an issue, actually, because it's so simple. Um, when you need to do really complicated things, it can be kind of hard to do where in R, that's what it's built for. It's made for those complex calculations. And so that's why those packages and libraries are built the way they are. And lastly, the libraries for all analytics needs are still being developed. And so, yes, it is a pro that those numbers are growing, uh, but it's still a con that they're you know behind R. And so R has more being developed and more already developed in terms of all their libraries and packages being built out, where Python it is still growing. Now on to my final answer, which is better, Python or R? It really depends. Um, but going back to my LinkedIn post that we talked about at the very beginning, I will say that I still 100% believe that. Because to me, for my type of work, the stuff that I do, Python is 100 times better. It's 100 times more useful. And so to me, Python is better than R. Uh, but it really does depend on what you're using it for. And so if you're doing purely statistical work, R is going to be the better choice. If you're doing machine learning, Python is arguably much better. In my opinion, R is harder to learn, but it has more features, while Python is easier to learn, uh, but isn't as developed yet. And so what I genuinely think you should do is I think you should try both. I think you really need to get some hands-on experience, take a course in both, 
just see what you think and, and determine for yourself what you think is better. I really will go back to that LinkedIn for a second. I believe that for me personally, Python is just better. I can use it for so many things. It is, in my opinion, uh, much better suited for me and what I do for my job. And so for me, Python is way better. But for other positions and other people, R may be the programming language of choice. And I'm totally okay with that. Uh, there were a lot of people in the comments who were writing, uh, you know, it just depends. And, and you know, why don't you think that one, is, why do you think that one is better than the other? You know, why can't it be both? And I really wanted to respond and be like, I agree with you. Uh, but I didn't because again, I thought it was more fun and I knew I was making this video. And so I, I genuinely, in the bottom of my heart to all those people, I agree with you. And so I want you to feel some vindication, some sense of, you know, you, you, you were right. And so I hope that this was um, hopefully a good outcome for what you were hoping for. Uh, I have nothing against R. I have used it um, and, I, and I've taken a few courses on it. Um, I have not used that much R in my actual job, although the data scientists that are in my department use it quite a bit. I mostly stick with Python. And so again, that's why I like it better. But I can honestly say that I've given both a fair chance. And so I think that you should do the same. I think you really should test out which one that you personally think is better. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I feel like it's worth subscribing to. I got some pretty good videos. I got a lot of videos coming out soon. Thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next video.